Hey, what's up you guys? I hope you're all having a great day today. Happy Independence Day for those of us who are in the United States. I am wearing my all-American shirt to celebrate. Um, be safe out there, whatever you plan, whatever plans you have for today. We're going to continue our reading through Revelation in this video, and we are just going to cover Revelation 12 because there is so much jam-packed into this chapter that I really don't want to make this a long video and it might end up being kind of long anyways. Um, so if you have not seen the other Reading Through Revelation videos, you can find that under my playlist tab if you want to catch up to where we're at right now. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So Revelation 12 verse 1 says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. I'm just going to stop right there and kind of fair warning to you guys in the other videos, I would like read straight through most of the time and then make a few comments at the end sometimes. But Revelation 12 is just so full of stuff. I'm just going to talk about it as we go along. Okay. So um, that great sign that appeared in heaven of a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars, that was actually something that like was enacted in the stars on September 23rd, 2017. Um, if you don't agree with me on that, that is totally fine. That's not a big deal. Um, then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So we have, we have that like birth pain analogy again. Um, and that is used whenever we are talking about the end times. Jesus himself says that the signs of the end are like birth pangs. He says that in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That word sorrows in the original text, which was Greek, means birth pangs. It's Odin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Odin, but a birth pain. So that's where we get that. This isn't something that we made up, right? So the signs of the end are becoming more frequent. They're becoming more intense, just like birth pangs do. So back to the signs, great sign. The woman here, the woman clothed with the sun, that represents Israel. And here we also see that she has a garland of 12 stars on her head. That would be the 12 tribes of Israel. So uh, starting in verse 3, it says, And another sign appeared in heaven. So we have the sign of the woman, and we have this other sign, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. I believe there was also a sign for this that was enacted in the stars. However, I do not have that date here, but you can drop it in the comments below if you know. Verse 5 says, She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. So talking about this woman who gave birth to a male child, and her child was caught up to God in his throne. So there's some hints here to figure out who this male child is. Um, two big ones. The first big one is that this child will rule all nations with a rod of iron. Um, in Psalm 2, 9, speaking of Jesus, says, You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in Revelation 19, 15, this is Jesus again. He's coming back at the second coming. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. So you can see here that this language, rule all nations with the rod of iron, is speaking about Jesus. Revelation 2, 26 through 27, is Jesus speaking to the church here. It says, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron and shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. You can see it's like literally that exact same language over and over again, ruling them with a rod of iron, ruling the nations, dashing, dashing them to pieces like a potter's vessel. That's exactly what is stated here in Psalm 2.9. Um, so... That is Jesus speaking to the church. 
And he says, to he who overcomes, and who's an overcomer? Of course, we use scripture to define scripture. And 1 John 5, 5 says, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So clearly, these that overcome are the believers, the church. This is in one of the letters that was written to the churches at the beginning of Revelation. So we who believe in Jesus will rule and reign with Christ with that rod of iron. So you can say here also that this child can represent the church. And the other thing is here at the last part of verse 5 in Revelation 12, it says, And her child was caught up to God in his throne. And that word caught up in the original text is harpazo, which is to seize, catch up, or snatch away. And that is the same word that is used to describe the rapture of the church in 1 Thessalonians 4. And that's actually where we get the word rapture from, because that is what it is in the Latin text, is rapturo. So that's how we got our word rapture. So the rapture is in the Bible. The word rapture itself is not in the English translated Bible, but you can see that it is an actual event. So you can call it the rapture, the harpazo, the catching away, whatever it is, it's describing a event. And it's the same event. Okay, so verse six. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there. Um, 1,260 days. We'll come back to that number in a few minutes. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So here it just straight out tells us that this dragon is Satan. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So you can see here, this is talking about a spiritual battle, a battle in the heavens. Um, and I just wanted to reference here Ephesians 6, 12 as an encouragement to you guys. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. When I read this text, when I was like preparing for this video, I just immediately thought of Ephesians 6 here and our spiritual battle that we are fighting. Um, because, I mean, of course, like we are wrestling with a spiritual battle, we know that, but sometimes we have to remind ourselves on a daily basis that that is the case. You know, we're not fighting the person that's our coworker necessarily, it's the spiritual battle. So the dragon here, of course, is Satan. His angels are the demons, which are represented by a third of the stars and the signs of the dragon. So going back to the beginning of chapter 12, um, 1 Timothy 4.1, says that the spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons that's another thing because this is like i said a spiritual battle so we have a lot of this in the end times where there are many people who are turning to like new age religion and things like that um and those are doctrines of demons <laughs> so we have to be very very careful about what church we are going to and how we are um, like studying scripture, that we are being very uh, biblically sound, that we have biblically sound doctrine, and we're not just like watching YouTube videos, <laughs> I'm speaking to myself here too, not just watching YouTube videos and just assuming that everything that person says is 100% correct. You always go back to scripture and make sure that it is doctrinally sound. So. Anyways, done with that point. Let's move on to verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren, who is Satan, who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the blood of Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So these are speaking of the tribulation saints here because it's saying they did not even live, uh, love their lives to the death, which is the key here that 
the tribulation saints will have to make that choice whether they are going to pledge allegiance to the antichrist and the antichrist system during the tribulation period and take that mark of the beast or are they going to stay true to jesus and be martyred for their faith so as is speaking of those tribulation saints verse 12 therefore rejoice o heavens and you who dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time so this is something really interesting here there is two things that are being said there's something that's being said to the people who are in the heavens and to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea so those are two different groups of people that are being talked to here so we have to distinguish um, who is in heaven that would be the church at this point we've already been raptured so we are rejoicing in heaven the inhabitants of the earth and the sea who is that those are those who are left behind after the rapture so um, the tribulation saints or um, those who are you know pledging allegiance to the Antichrist um, and taking the mark of the beast those are those are the ones who are the inhabitants of the earth and the sea those who are left behind um, and it says woe to them <laughs> because of all of the wrath of God that is being poured out into the world during this seven-year tribulation period okay so verse 13 says now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. So once again, we see that woman who's Israel. He's persecuting Israel. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So I just wanna stop here and talk for a little bit about this timing. Like what is this time, times and half a time? And how does this relate to that 100 or 1,260 days that was mentioned a few verses ago. So um, first let's read Matthew 24 and it's going to be verses 15 through 22. So this says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in these days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So I wanted to read all of that to you guys. Once again, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples about what the signs of the end are going to be. And so he's saying that this, there is a point where there's going to be abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. So we're going to go read Daniel right now where that's mentioned so we can see like what that is. What is the abomination of desolation here? But he's saying that when that happens, flee. So this is like that woman in Revelation 12 fleeing on those wings, two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time, times, and half time from the presence of a serpent. So this is that woman fleeing. This is Israel fleeing. Jesus is telling them, flee. <laughs> so these are like the same event that's going to happen. Okay, so um, just really quick, time, times, and half a time is 3.5 years. So this is the midpoint of the seven year tribulation, the total amount of time for the great tribulation is seven years. And then that midway point would be 3.5 years. And we're going to see that here as well in Daniel here in a second. So those 100, I'm sorry, I keep saying 100, 1,260 days is equal to three and a half years. So we saw that. I'll go back and read that verse right now. Um, but one biblical year is 360 days. It's not 365 days. It's 360 days. Okay, let me go find that verse. So this is Revelation 12, 6. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. So this is the same amount of time. This is 3.5 years. It's the same thing here. The woman is fleeing into the wilderness, right? Okay, so Daniel 9, 27. 
We're going to read that and then Daniel 12 as well. So Daniel 9.27 says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That one week is a period of seven years, just so you guys know. Okay, continuing. So it says, but in the middle of the week, so here we have that midpoint, the middle of those seven years, which is 3.5 years in, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Okay, um, so like I said, that one week is seven years, and then that midpoint would be that 3.5 years. So that's that 1,260 days or three and a half years um, in the middle of the tribulation period. In Matthew 24, what Jesus is talking about, that abomination of desolation, is whenever the Antichrist, who is this, who confirms a covenant with many for one week, for seven years, in the middle of that week, at that 3.5 mark, he is going to stand in the newly built third temple and declare himself to be God. So that is that abomination of desolation, and that is when Jesus is like, flee as fast as you can and take nothing with you. Do not turn back to get anything and flee. And there will be a literal running away. <laughs> the Israelites will run away and they will flee. Um, and then God will supernaturally protect them during the rest of the tribulation period. So let's go ahead and read Daniel 12, 1 as well. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. And so this language, this is a time of trouble, such as never, uh, never was since there was a nation, even to that time is also in Matthew 24. Let me turn there really quick because I don't have that written down. Matthew 24, 21. Did I read it? Did I have it already on here? I think I did. It did. Okay, it says, For then there will be a great tribulation such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. Like literally like the exact same wording here. Um, so this is talking about the tribulation period. I just wanted to throw Daniel 12 in there. It is amazing how when you start studying scripture, how much you catch like this. Um, scripture is meant for us to dive into and digest like this. And Daniel and Revelation are the perfect Bible study to do together, by the way, um, if that's something that you're interested in doing. Because a lot of this goes hand in hand. You will see the same language over and over again in both of them. Okay, so verse 15 of Revelation 12. So, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. So the woman flees, right? And then this happens. That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So you can see here that God supernaturally protects the Israelites. Um, Satan goes after them. He cannot get them, right? He cannot prevail against them. But he goes to make war with the rest of her offspring. He's very upset, right? So he's like, I'm just going to go get like whoever I can at this point. Um, and it says these are those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So this is like very similar um, language to the tribulation saints that we saw here earlier in Revelation 12. Let me go find that verse here. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Um, right here in verse... 11 of Revelation 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. So the word of their testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ. So those is that is speaking of the tribulation saints, making war with the rest of her offspring. Um, so that is it, you guys. We made it through, and we are 20 minutes in. I feel like it wasn't that long, but then again, I guess it was. But time flies when you're having fun. So... 
I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless you. I'm going to probably do another video here pretty soon, uh, encouraging video. I, I hope you guys can check it out. But I, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and enjoy this Independence Day if you're here in the United States. And I will see you in the clouds very, very soon. And guess what, you guys? Every day is a great day to be raptured. So literally today we could be raptured. Today is a great day to be raptured. God bless you.